What's good, Tribes and Ones family? This is Pastor G, and we are fresh off of taking time to remember, focus on the sacrifice that was made for us through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if there's one message that we can take away from paying attention to the resurrection story is that you can never count God out. In the midst of what we may be dealing with and what we may be struggling with, we may be facing some stuff that has us on the ropes and we feel like we're fighting for our lives. But today, regardless of what you're dealing with, I want you to remember that you can never, ever be counted out, not with God on your side. And so stay tuned because we're going to take a look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 36. And we're going to talk about Never Count Me Out. Coming up next on The Tribal Ones. going to take a look at one verse, which is verse number four. However, we're going to kind of walk through all of chapter 36 and chapter 37 as well, really briefly. And so verse four in chapter 36 of Isaiah in the NIV version says, the field commander said to them, tell Hezekiah, this is what the great king, the king of Assyria says. On what are you basing this confidence of yours? Now, what's happening here is the king of Assyria has been running through the countryside. And he's come to the place where he is ready to attack Jerusalem, which is the capital city of Judah. It's important for us to note that uh, the Assyrian king has already attacked many of the cities within Judah already. But now he's come to the capital city. So he dispatches some of his officials. He sends them forth to give word to King Hezekiah of Jerusalem. And he says, in Cyril speak, in Pastor G speak, he says, listen, man. There's no way you can get out of this. So why don't you just go ahead and uh, bow down. Give me what I want. And I might let you walk away from this situation. Now Hezekiah, the king, has some decisions to make. We're going to talk about three things today. And the first of those things are the odds are often stacked against us. The odds are often stacked against us. So in verse number four, it says, the field commander said to them, tell Hezekiah, this is what the great king, the king of Assyria says. So it says the great king, the king of Assyria. It's important to note that at one point in time in history, the Assyrian empire conquered the areas of, of what is known today as Iraq and Syria Jordan and Lebanon. So we're talking about a lot, a lot of room here, a lot of space geographically that the Assyrian Empire has taken over. And so this was not a nation or a king to be messed up with. And now they're at Jerusalem's door, banging on the door. And the great king has sent his field commander out there. And the field commander is demanding that Hezekiah surrender. Hezekiah is in an impossible situation. Now, it isn't mentioned here in Isaiah, but the same situation is described in 2 Kings chapter 18. It mentions the same interaction, except in the account that's in 2 Kings, we're told that Hezekiah attempts to buy his way out of this situation. And so he apologizes to the, to the king's official and he goes into the temple 
takes all the silver out of the temple. He goes into the royal treasury. He takes the gold out of the royal treasury. He sends this stuff to King Sennacherib. And he basically hopes that this takes care of the situation. The king takes the precious metals. He takes the silver and he takes the gold. But then he still sends a huge army out along with the field commander. Why? Because he has no desire to be paid off. He wants it all. He doesn't want to leave you alone. He doesn't want to leave me alone. He doesn't want a part of who we are. He wants everything that he can take. That is how the enemy feels about us. So the enemy may make you feel like he's all right with uh, settling with a small part of you for, for, for a time. He makes it seem like if you negotiate with him that he'll take what you're willing to give and be all right with what you're willing to give. But it doesn't work that way. He's coming for everything. He's coming for your marriage. He's coming for your family. He's coming for your kids. He's coming for your health, your mind, your peace, your possessions, your honor, your integrity, your morals. He wants it all. Do not attempt to negotiate with the enemy. So Hezekiah, he's given up some stuff to try to appease the enemy, only to find out that his stuff has been taken, and he's still in the same exact situation. He's facing a forceful enemy, and this enemy plans on decimating him. So the odds are often stacked against us. But then the second point is this. The obedience is often what separates us. So the king's field commander, he's just reckless with his mouth. And he starts talking directly to the people. And, and he's like, don't, don't let Hezekiah get y'all hemped up. He says, don't be misled. Don't be deceived by Hezekiah when he says that the Lord will deliver you. But this is where the field commander messes up. See, he's talking trash to Hezekiah and he's, he's talking trash to the people of Jerusalem. And he's probably right because Assyria could easily thrash Jerusalem. But now <laughs> he's talking about what God can and what God can't do. The people of Jerusalem don't respond. In fact, the king later on uh, sends a letter to Hezekiah, and this is what it says in, in Isaiah 37, verses 10 through 13. I'm going to read this. It says, say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, do not let the God you depend on deceive you when he says Jerusalem will not be given into the hands of the king of Assyria. Surely you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the countries, destroying them completely, and will you be delivered? Did the gods of the nations that were destroyed by my predecessors deliver them? The gods of Gozan and Haran and Rezeph and the people of Eden who were in Tel Asar? Where is the king of Hamath or the king of Arpad? Where are the kings of Lear and Sepharvim and Hena and Iva? He's basically saying, look, we've run through this spot. We've taken all the gods out. What makes you think for a moment that we will not shellac you and your God. Bear in mind that he sends this letter after he's already taken Hezekiah's stuff. So how does Hezekiah respond this time? Hezekiah goes into the temple to pray. And he sends his officials to the prophet Isaiah. He goes to get that quiet time in with God. But he also says, I need some spiritual reinforcements. He says, I need somebody who I can trust with what's going on. Somebody who won't take my despair, my depression, and run to somebody else and share it. Somebody who won't secretly be glad that I'm facing some real stuff here. Somebody who cares and empathizes and wants to see me come out of this. Somebody who can see that I'm sinking into depression and is determined to see me through. Hezekiah recognizes that obedience to God is the answer on this go-round. 
So, maybe you tried a different solution last time. You relied on or you depended upon somebody. You tried your own ingenuity. You, you convinced yourself that you could outsmart the enemy. You acted out of emotions like fear or dread, anger, depression, or despair. Or maybe even arrogance because you thought to yourself, I got this. Only to realize that you made it ten times worse. Well, obedience is what often separates us from everybody else. Operating in prayer and being spiritually led when it comes to our decisions. But then we have our third and final point, which is the omnipotent is always who saves us. The omnipotent is always who saves us. Omnipotent means all-powerful. So the field commander in person and the king Sennacherib by way of letter have both said, what makes you think that you can come out of this without having to bow down to me? So God responds to Hezekiah through the prophet Isaiah. He does this in verses 22 through 35 of chapter 37. But here it is, the last three verses of that, meaning verses 33 through 35, says this. Therefore, this is what the Lord says concerning the king of Assyria. He will not enter this city or shoot an arrow here. He will not come before it with shield or build a siege ramp against it. By the way that he came, he will also return. He will not enter this city, declares the Lord. I will defend this city and save it for my sake and for the sake of David, my servant. God, the omnipotent one, the all-powerful one says, I will take care of this for my sake because my name is on the line. I know that you tried it your way, but now he's questioning my integrity. He's questioning my strength and my faithfulness. He's questioning my power, and I got to let him know. So that person who has shaped their mouth to dog you out, let God handle them. That person who is determined to be reckless and disrespectful, God got it. That situation that's giving you anxiety, God already knows. That thing that thinks it's got you right where it wants you, God's going to show up. That thing that you're afraid of, God's going to make it turn away from you. We're told that God then dispatched the death angel after he responds to Hezekiah through the prophet Isaiah. And 185,000 of the Assyrians were put to death. The great king, the king of Assyria, the mighty king who dared to challenge the king of kings, broke camp and ran. Later we find out that while he was worshiping his own pagan gods in their temple, two of his own sons murdered him. So you have an enemy and you may feel like you're under siege. The odds are often stacked against us. This is true. Always remember that the obedience is often what separates us. We got to pray. We got to lean on those spiritual folks. And finally, know that the omnipotent is always who saves us. If you stand with God, nothing and no one can stand against you. Stand with him, and no one can ever count you out. Heavenly Father, we come before you now to say thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for watching over us and keeping us. But we ask that you move on our behalf. Every last one of us has an enemy. Every last one of us has someone or something that seeks to take us out. That is more and more powerful than we are. That could be overwhelming. Help us to not look to our right or to our left for assistance, but rather to look to the hills from whence cometh all of our help. 
because all of our help comes from you. I'm asking right now that just as you sent word to Hezekiah, that you would send word both to us and to our enemy, that he or it will not prevail against us. Send out your death angel who will visit that thing and or that person to take them out. Maybe not literally, but physically to where they know that they can't stand against us because we stand with you. Finally, Lord, we ask that you would forgive us, wipe us clean, send us back out so that we can duly represent you. All of these things we ask in your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ's name we pray, and all of the trifling ones said, Amen. Thank you.